Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to share with you 10 fragrances that I think are great scents that you might not consider worth wearing, or you might not have considered Valentine's Day scents, or some of them maybe you have or haven't. I wanted to share with you some 10 scents that are mature, elegant, and beautiful, and perfect for date nights, to add a boost of compliments and confidence to your fragrance rotation, and are great to wear on special occasions like Valentine's Day. So if you'd like to know what those fragrances are, then keep I've watching. been doing YouTube for a while. Hi, my name is Kristen. I am a fragrance enthusiast. I use YouTube as a way to connect with other people who enjoy scent. I am a YouTube hobbyist. YouTube is a way for me to talk and chat and review and recommend different fragrances, but most importantly, it's a way for me to connect with other people who love scent. So if you enjoy that type of content, make sure to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the little bell to be notified when I have new videos. But since I've been doing this for almost six years at this point, maybe seven, I can't keep count. I've kind of lost track. I've been doing this, so I've obviously done like top rose fragrances, top gourmand fragrances, top chocolate fragrances, and over the years probably done at least one or two fragrances for Valentine's Day. I will link all of those videos below, and if I have any reviews of these scents, I will link them below as well. I wanted to compile a list though of different fragrances. Most of these I don't see too many people talking about. And I also thought that this would be a great time to talk about a style of perfumery. I'm not gonna get too much into the true definition of what I mean, of scents that I think are so good to wear for date nights, Valentine's Day scents, uh, just to make an impression to boost your confidence if you're looking for compliments. And those are like fragrances that have a complex, beautiful composition that really focus on some maturity, sophistication, and elegance. And I get a lot of people asking me for mature fragrances. I'm looking for something that has a lot of iris. I'm looking for something that has aldehydes. I'm looking for something that isn't too youthful. I'm looking for something that has this and this. And I notice that there's a lot of focus around Valentine's Day on like gourmands and roses. And I love those videos. Oh, I almost fall off my stool. And I love watching those videos. So I wanted to focus this channel, this video, on some different fragrances that I find to be perfect for Valentine's this Day. This fragrance is from Etat Libre d'Orange and it is Bijou Romantique. I like to say, and um, I've talked about this before, I can't remember what video it's on, that if somebody were to have smelled Shalimar 10 years ago, like a nose, and they were to forget about it, and they were so enraptured by it, and they were trying to recreate it from memory, this is about what they would recreate but it has a bit of a more modern twist. I love the Ylang Ylang in here. The citruses are nice and bright, but what I really enjoy in this is the sage. The sage to me adds like an herbal kind of freshness and a beautiful, unique aromatic quality that I think gives it a little bit more of a modern edge without losing that classic, timeless beauty and just effervescent glamour. And yes, I said effervescent glamour, and you're gonna be like, what? There's something about Shalimar that sits on the skin and it feels like a very thick coat, but you don't feel like you're wearing the coat. It's not heavy in a bad way. It's not suffocating. It just feels like the correct amount of fragrance. And I love that it feels like it's comforting you and covering you, but not suffocating you. But Bijou Romantique with that little tiny bit of sage and the white florals are a little bit more dazzling in this as well, gives it a little bit more of a fresh and modern take, which I really enjoy. So if you're the type of person that enjoys a slightly more modern take on perfumery, but you want something in your collection that's still sophisticated and very elegant, and beautiful and has a timeless sex appeal to it, I think Bijou Romantique is worth checking out. And the reason why I wanted to include this fragrance is that there's something timeless and beautiful and classic. And those are the types of fragrances that most people save for special occasions like Valentine's Day or anniversaries. And I think if you want a little bit more out of a fragrance rather than just what everyone is wearing, 
Not many people will be wearing this, but you will still have that beautiful, timeless, iconic, classic composition. The sage and the dazzling white florals actually make this smell more shared. Now, fragrance is genderless. You can wear whatever you want. When I say a fragrance as masculine or feminine, I'm talking more about the types of fragrances and the formulas and compositions you would find marketed to men because generally people who prefer masculine things tend to prefer more leathers and tobacco and more salty, woody aromatics. And the people who prefer more men feminine leading fragrances tend to prefer more sweet floral gourmands. It doesn't mean that you can't shop on any side, just generally marketing. It makes more sense for them to market these types of fragrances on this side of the aisle. But what I mean is, is generally these types of compositions have always leaned more towards the more mature um, women's side of the fragrance counter. But notes like Clary Sage have always been more dominant in the aromatic fragrances on the men's fragrance side. So I think that the Clary Sage with this very timeless, beautiful composition really anchors it in the middle as a shared unisex fragrance. Going into the flavor profile of citrus, yes, we're going into this. I really wanted to talk about these two first because I don't think I'm gonna to need to get too into it with the other fragrances. One citrus I see and hope to see it more utilized in perfumery is Blood Orange. Blood Orange has this beautiful, deep, concentrated orange juice-like scent, like flavor. It's like you took an orange juice and you cooked it down and you cooked it down and you cooked it down. And it's just, it's so beautiful. It's delicious, but it's so beautiful in perfumery, especially when you want citrus without the brightness. And the brightness will come more from you know, the sparkling, um, energizing, dazzling, you know, just kind of effervescence that citruses can add. Also different citruses can mimic like creaminess, juiciness, tanginess, zestiness. And in this fragrance from Thomas Cosmala, Apres Le Amour, I can't pronounce anything. My tongue doesn't do what it wants to do other than barely being able to pronounce English. This fragrance is a beautiful, medley of citruses, aromatic spices, woods. It's warm and spicy and really comforting and really sexy. It is also an ambroxan bomb. So if you hate ambroxan, this is not the fragrance for you, but I find ambroxan to be one of those types of notes that really just grabs attention. So if you're looking for a scent to make an impression when you're entering a room, if you want to smell sexy, and powerful. Ambroxan is a great note. Some people think it cheapens a fragrance. I think it depends on how it is balanced. Now going into chemically and synthetic, Ambroxan can easily overpower and cheapen a composition. What I like about this is it has lemon zest and it also has blood orange. So the blood orange and the lemon zest smell like a more concentrated citrus in the background. It's very predominant, actually. The citrus in here is up front and center with the spices, but it is not so dazzling or so citrusy acidic that it breaks the balance that the ambroxan has with the woods and the spices. I feel if the lemon and the blood orange, or if it was a different type of citrus, I love green mandarin in fragrances, but the green mandarin would have been horrible. It would have made this smell like bug spray. I, I, I know it. The fact that you have the flavor profile of the citruses and not the stereotypical brightness of the citruses really balances the woods and the spices and helps the ambroxan really shine. There is just enough for ambroxan in here to be front and center, but to not overpower in a way that it smells chemically synthetic or cheap. This is a really beautiful fragrance that really focuses on woods, spices, and broxin in a beautiful, and I mean beautiful, mix of citruses. I really, really love this fragrance. I don't wear it a lot because a lot of people compare it as a Baccarat Rouge dupe. I don't disagree that it smells very similar to Baccarat Rouge. I don't think it has the sweetness, like the candy floss sweetness, that Baccarat Rouge has. It definitely has the spiciness, but what I do really enjoy about this fragrance, specifically on my skin, 
is just how the citruses pair with the spices and the ambroxan. And I think this is really sexy and a great scent to wear. This definitely smells like a more shared masculine version of Baccarat Rouge. And I know a lot of people love that scent. It's obviously a cult classic, but a lot of people say it smells too much like candy floss. It smells too much like sugar. It smells too sweet. If you like the idea of that fragrance, if you like the composition, but you think it leans too sweet for your tastes, I would say maybe try a sample of this or try it on your skin. It's really great, but it has all of that sexy, beautiful power that Baccarat has. Baccarat Rouge, the Eau de Parfum, not the x -Trait. They smell different. I did a whole video talking about both of them. But I, I love the citrus profile in here with the lemon zest and the blood orange. And you also have to smell it on your skin because when you smell it like this, you're getting ambroxan. <laughs> you're really just getting ambroxan. It smells cheap. It smells dull. It smells just off. But on your skin, it blossoms and blooms and it's just so sexy and such a confidence boosting fragrance. Next fragrance I'm not going to get too much into. I've decided if I've reviewed these scents I don't need to talk for too long about them. This is a fragrance that isn't the most creative in regards to composition but that doesn't mean that this fragrance in and of itself isn't creative and isn't amazing and it's whatever from Good Vibes Perfume. Now what I like about Good Vibes Perfume is I love that these fragrances are very easy to understand. They're nothing out of the realm of possibility to where they are intimidating or challenging, but there's always like this unique little creative edge with these fragrances that make them really special and really beautiful. And what I love about whatever is like this deep, but still very fresh fruitiness. I liken it to specifically like when I wear this, it kind of smells like I'm wearing this really beautiful, very expensive designer fragrance. And I also just bit into the most gorgeous plum in my life and it's just juicy and you can smell it and it's just them co-mingling together. And there's just something really pleasant and beautiful about that. A lot of people don't really vibe or enjoy the compositions of Shalimar or enjoy ouds or woods or spices. They want something that's going to smell sexy and empowering and fruity and just something that's going to give them a boost of confidence without being so challenging to the point where they smell like they're just close their eyes and pick whatever and they pick the wrong thing. Like they got dressed in the dark, but they chose their fragrance in the dark. And sometimes it's nice to have something that's wearable and crowd pleasing, but still has a uniqueness to it. And that's what I like about whatever. If you like fragrances from the house of Lancome, if you enjoy fragrances from Dior, if you like fragrances from Versace, if you like those deep, beautiful designer fragrances that smell very sexy, that are very um, feminine, that have a beautiful sensuality to them, smell very luxurious and beautiful and confident, and you like deep fruits, if you like plums and berries and sweetness and vanilla, and you don't want too much brightness in your fragrances, you want a more deep, sexy fragrance, but something that doesn't smell like too molten, too coffee, too heavy. You want a little bit of lightness to that scent. Again, like biting into a fresh, big, beautiful plum that's what I like about whatever. That deep fruitiness doesn't smell like a concentrated fruitiness. And it works with this scent. And it just smells so sexy on the skin. And if you enjoy those scents and you want something a little bit different with a little bit more of an edge, I just, I really like this house. I've been enjoying Caribbean lines, something I've really loved wearing. 100 is excellent. But whatever I find to be just something really beautiful, especially if you enjoy designer fragrances. I know that there's this whole niche is better, designer's better, but there's a reason why designer scents are so popular. There is a beauty to those fragrances. And if you enjoy those fragrances, but you want something a little bit different and more special, whatever, just because of that gorgeous, like fresh fruit, but like that deep fresh fruit note in here, I find to just elevate this, makes it a little bit more luxurious, special, and sexy. That's why I recommend this. Guy. I'm gonna bring you these two together. They're completely different fragrances, but each in their own I find to be perfect. So the first one is Black Jade from Lubin, 
and then we have Le Parfum de Therese from Frederick Mall. These in their own way I find to be gorgeous, beautiful. This is an example of a gorgeous near masterpiece or masterpiece perfume. It smells mature, sexy, elegant, just like romantic. And the melon in here, kind of like the deep fruit and whatever, is so unexpected and so perfect. I talk about this one all the time. It's so underappreciated. And if you want something very sophisticated, but still playful and flirty, but elegant and timeless, Le Parfum de Therese, if you enjoy something fruity. Now, if you want a little bit more spice, Black Jade, absolutely gorgeous. It's aromatic and a little bit spicy, but it's a classic and you will quite literally smell like a queen. I like these because if you are enjoying more classic compositions, but you're looking for something a little bit more aromatic or a little bit more fruity, but not smelling like everybody else, these two are excellent fragrances that smell sexy, but they're not basically giving up a maturity or a sophistication. They're still very elegant. If I were to think how I like to smell, not how other people want me to smell, how I like to smell when I think I smell sophisticated and elegant and what I feel like I smell sexy and mature and confident. It's, it's iris. <laughs> it's, it's powder. It's, I love to smell like powder. Nobody else that I know in my life <laughs> likes me smelling like powder, but I love it. So these two scents are more personal choices that I just adore. Now this one, the first one I'm going to mention, the original before the reformulation most definitely beats out this one, but this one is still gorgeous and it's Iris from Zerjoff. Beautiful fragrance, definitely gorgeous. Carrot and Iris just go together so well, like chocolate marshmallow and graham crackers. It's just so beautiful and elegant and just so perfect. And this just smells like I feel like I'm dressing up when I wear this and I feel like I'm doing something special, like a special occasion. And there's something about getting excited for dressing up to do something special, like going out on a date for an anniversary or a birthday or a special occasion date like Valentine's Day. And I love the way that Iris just smells on everybody's skin. It smells so beautiful and timeless and gorgeous and sexy. It's just there's an elegance to Iris that I just enjoy. I can understand why people don't like it, but it's just so just beautiful and confident and I, I adore it. So Iris from Zerjoff. Now if we're going back to classic composition, something that has that maturity that feels like an old world scent, feels like something you might have smelled um, in a glamorous woman's boudoir, you know, or on her vanity like 50, 60, 100 years ago. Uh, Powder de Fleur from Royal Crown. This fragrance is elegance in a bottle, but it also is sexy because of just its decadence in regards to its powder and its complexity. It just smells so beautiful. It has that deep, rich, gorgeous, just base of just the powder and the flowers. It's just stunning. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I reviewed it like not too long ago, but this definitely smells mature, probably the most mature fragrance out of all of these. It's not for people who hate powder and it's not for people who hate mature fragrances and it's expensive. Oh boy, it's Royal Crown expensive, but I do love the house. And not too many people talk about this scent from the house because the other fragrances from the house I can completely understand being more hyped up. Sultan, Oud Jasmine, there's so many different fragrances from this house that I find to be absolutely spectacular. But I find this one specifically to be underappreciated. I find this to kind of smell, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but just hear me out. You know when you have like lipstick that's been in your purse too long that smells kind of stale? I know Lipstick Rose from Frederick Mall has that, but that it still has that sweet rose. This smells like it like with, without the rose, with a more iris. But it doesn't have that kind of stale bitterness of Houbegant's, um Iris de Champs. 
it's got a little bit more of a sweetness and a roundness in it in the background. So if you enjoy that kind of like stale makeup smell, if that's like your sexiness, and that is my sexiness, that is my definition of a sexy fragrance, this is for you. And that's why I wanted to include it because I just think it's gorgeous. And I wanted to include um, two personal picks of just my own personal bias of what I think elegant and sexy fragrances that deserve to be on this list. So here they are. This one is one that I recently added to my collection and it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous tuberose and it's Heartless Helen. This is part of the Penhaligon's Portraits collection. The reason why I wanted to include this is because when we think about sexy fragrances for Valentine's Day, we usually look at jasmine and rose and bouquets of flowers. And I think that when we look at something a little bit lighter, but still mature, I love how white florals just perform. And white florals can smell mature or they can smell dated. And I love a good dated white floral. Me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm there for it. Not everybody is. But when you have tuberose, tuberose is so distinctive. It can do a lot of different things. But what I love about Heartless Helen is it just smells like a gorgeous tuberose. And there's something so kind of exotic and luxurious about that, that I find it to be just so attractive. And if you want to smell floral and flirty on Valentine's Day or for a special occasion, but you don't want to smell like every flower that everyone else is going to be wearing, I think Heartless Helen is beautiful because the tuberose doesn't smell too tropical, which can be very sexy. Terracotta Le Parfum is gorgeous and very complimentary. But what I like about this scent specifically is that because the tuberose just smells so perfect, it's not too creamy. It has a little bit of greenness in there, a little bit of freshness. It's not too tropical. It doesn't smell like it's trying to be anything other than a beautiful white flower. And there's something so confident about that. It's like, here I am, I'm a beautiful white flower. Here I am. And I find that that just smells, that confidence translates as a perfume being like, I'm wearing this beautiful flower. Here I am, look at me, I'm perfect. Like peacocking around, even though this isn't a peacock. I think this is a cockatoo. I'm really bad at animals. <laughs> like what I like about this scent. If you're not wanting to smell like a rose, if you want to smell as a distinctive flower, not like a bouquet of white flowers, because that can also get lost too. But if you want to smell distinctive and fresh, but still glamorous and sophisticated and sexy and to stand out, this one, fantastic, because this is distinctive enough where it'll stand out in a crowd, but it's also not going to clash and it's also not going to be the type of fragrance that you can't wear anywhere. So if you have a fun night planned, like you're going to do a bunch of different things, maybe go to dinner, have a more of an adventurous date, go about, you know, have a little, I know some people like to do dinner and have little activities and you want to smell beautiful and do that wherever you go. This is a great scent too. But I just like that if you want to smell like a beautiful, luxurious flower that smells sexy and mature and very confident and attractive, I can't think of a better flower other than the rose than a tuberose. And, you know, this one is just fantastic. These last two fragrances lean a little bit more shared, one of them a little bit more on the masculine side. These are just, for me, easy grabs. If you're looking for something sexy, and confident and beautiful and just perfect. I, you can't go wrong with these. Y'all know how I feel about this one, Beverly Hills exclusive from Unique Luxury, gorgeous fragrance. The tobacco in here is absolutely just attention grabbing sexy. If you're looking for something that has, like it's ambery, it's attractive, it's take charge. This is just gorgeous. This was my favorite release of 2021. So this one is definitely part of this list. I don't really think I need to go into it. Last is Oud Silk Mood from Maison Francis Kerjean. This is the Eau de Parfum. Now, I love what Francis Kerjean does with Oud. I need to do a video about it. I really do need to sit down and talk to you guys about what I think of his Ouds. I know a lot of people hate Oud. I, I get it. <laughs> I get it. 
And if you do not like oud, I understand. If you want to really jump into oud and you want an introductory oud, Francis Kurjan, really most of his fragrances, aside from maybe Velvet Mood, I find to really, it exaggerates all the good parts of Oud and kind of tames all the intimidating, challenging parts of Oud. Oud Silk Mood, what I enjoy about this one specifically is that it has this clarity to it, which amps up the sexiness, but at the same time, it just smells timeless and classic. The other ones I find to be too sweet, too round, too strong, and I like that. Don't get me wrong, it's gorgeous. But as a general recommendation saying, try this as a, you know, a great sexy fragrance to wear on Valentine's Day that also smells really confident and traction, will elicit compliments, and also smells a little bit more mature and timeless, I find Oud Silk Mood to be a little bit better in my opinion than Satin Mood. That's my personal opinion, doesn't mean everyone agrees with me, but just what I think, but I, I like, I like that it smells a little bit more aromatic which puts more emphasis on the wood. And I think that that's what I'm looking for from these fragrances, as a more emphasis on the wood part of it. And that's where his ouds really shine. And as I almost dropped this bottle, and wait, there we go, wait, there we go. And that's just, this, this scent is beautiful. Now, I don't wear this one too much, to be completely honest. I need to wear it more. I have a travel size of it. So when I wear that fragrance, I usually go to that. That's why that bottle looks full. But if you wanna know the fragrance from his house, uh, his Oud that I wear the most, it's Oud Cashmere Mood. That is my favorite, but that, that's not making it into this list because I wouldn't recommend that for everybody. It smells like a campfire and I love it. But those are the fragrances that I recommend for Valentine's Day. If you're looking for something a little bit more timeless, mature, classic, but will still hopefully garner compliments. I think that these are definitely compliment inducing fragrances. We have fragrances that smell a little bit more mainstream, but have beautiful fruity nuances to it. We have fragrances that smell classic, but have a modern twist. We have more masculine fragrances. We have more feminine fragrances. We have aromatic fragrances. We have a little something for everybody. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, guys, I would love to know if you have any recommendations on mature, sexy, sophisticated scents to wear for Valentine's Day or other special occasions like anniversaries or celebrations or just special date nights. And let me know what you guys are planning on wearing too. Or do you disagree with any of my choices? Let me know in the comment section always, below. Guys, I hope you're all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time.